Do you exercise throughout your week or do you just stay active? Understanding the difference between these two is huge for your long-term health and function. That's exactly what we're going to be discussing on this week's episode of the Exercises Health Podcast. We're going to cue our introduction and we're going to dive right into this conversation. Hey, welcome back, exercisers, to the Exercise is Health podcast, brought to you by Exercise for Life Studios, where we believe that your health is your most valuable asset, and the single best thing that you can do to both boost and protect this asset is exercise. Specifically, exercise is geared towards building the health and function of your muscles. We are your hosts, Charlie. And Julie. And today we're discussing this idea of being active versus exercising, and why these two are not one in the same. But before we get into this week's conversation, we we have a favor to ask of you. That's right. The number one thing you can do to support our podcast is to leave us a rating and review. A lot of people don't realize that those are almost the lifeline for podcasts like this. So if you've been enjoying this content, you've been applying it, you've seen your health and your function change because of what you're learning here, then we would really appreciate if you would leave us that rating and review. So like we said, this week we're talking about this difference between being active and exercising. Okay. Because a lot of times the conversation comes up of like, okay, well, you know, how often do you exercise? exercise. And a lot of people will kind of wiggle their way around answering that by saying, well, you know, I'm active a lot. Like I I never sit down. I'm always doing stuff throughout the day. And while that's fine and well, uh, it doesn't actually answer the question. So Julie, actually, I have a question for you. Okay. Okay. Um, How often do you have conversations like this with your clientele about being active versus like actually going and exercising? All the time. <laughs> well, I find that a lot of my our our members, our our clients that I talk to, um, are very good at being active, mm-hmm. um, and that means that they're really good at moving around all day, and that is really great. But I do find that there's a constant conversation about finding time for designated exercise, and we'll we'll define both in a little bit. But a lot of people that I definitely interact with, and maybe you're listening to this and you're like, oh, that's me. You might feel like, well, I'm. I do exercise because I'm active all day. At the end of the day, I'm really tired. Are you asking if I sit around all day? No, I don't. I'm, I'm really moving around all day. So if you fall in that category, that means that you are very active throughout the day. Absolutely. It's almost the difference between like being busy and being productive. Like both days are filled with doing stuff. One is really getting you somewhere. Others are just kind of like getting through the day. So what we find a lot with being active is it's, you know, running the errands throughout the day, doing stuff around the house doing stuff in the yard doing stuff you know with your kids or whatever but if there's no designated time that's really set aside where you're like okay now I'm really gonna focus on improving my strength improving my cardiovascular fitness on you know working on my mobility or you know all the different benefits that you can get from exercise there's nothing really like okay I'm really gonna focus in and do a hard cardio session now or really challenge my muscles with some resistance training that doesn't come up But what is coming up is, you know, again, being on your feet, moving around, which is great. That is super important. And we don't want you to cut that out, but we need you to understand there is a difference between that and like really focused and more intense exercise. Yeah. Charlie, I didn't ask you the same question. Do you find the same like that I was noticing that you, the conversations that you have or not so much with your population? Not as much with my population. I serve a different demographic than than you serve. Um, And I think a lot of times, with with my population, uh, like they definitely understand when they're working out hard, and then they're less likely to be like up and moving around on their feet all day. It's more like, well, I work out hard, and then you know I'm just kind of sedentary for you know 23 hours of the day, and so it's a little bit of a different conversation because they're missing more of the active piece versus the exercise piece. Right, right. So if we jump back into what are we talking about when we talk about active, being active versus being someone that exercises. So someone that's active, we've we've already brushed on this, but it's someone that moves around all day. You probably have been asked if you've exercised, you say, well, I don't sit around. And maybe you're even tired at the end of the day because you've moved so much. Maybe you, you know, you're moving around your house or you're with your children all day. That is type of activity, meaning it's low level. You're not like changing your clothes to do a a 30 minute to one hour like bout of exercise, but it's like low key to medium key all day long. And there's this movement that's kind of continuous or, you know, in spurts all day long. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about active. 
But when we're talking about a person that exercises, we're talking about you're someone that regularly throughout your week, four to seven times a week, you're changing your clothes to go change the state of your body, to challenge your body, to do something that's challenging with the intention to change the health and function of your body. So they're very different stimulus to the body. And that's why we have to talk about the differences because one can't replace the other and we do need both. Because they're so different, your body experiences that stimulus, that challenge so differently that your body will respond differently. We need both, but we but we do know that one can't replace the other. Definitely. And we've talked about this in the past, uh, similar ideas using terms like all the time exercise versus special event exercise and things like that. And we want to kind of of further this conversation along by really giving a strong definition of what we mean when we say exercise, because that can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. You know, if you go to the mall and you're doing your shopping um, and you're walking from one store to the next and, you know, you're carrying your bags and everything like that, like we might call that shopping. But if you go before the stores open and you're going from one store to the next, but, you know, you are walking at a pace that feels more challenging, we might call that mall walking or we might call that your workout, right? So what's the difference between the two? Because both you're still at the mall, you're still walking from one store to the next. And what we see is there are two big differences between being active and exercising, okay? The first is a relative challenge, okay? It needs to be more challenging, okay? That that will fall in the exercise category, okay? The second that makes it fall in the exercise category is like Julie was saying, the intention of of improving the health and function of your body. So how we go about defining exercise is challenging your muscles with the intent of improving the health and function of your body. And both parts are necessary. You need to challenge your body and it needs to have the intention of improving the health and function of your body, okay? If you go into an activity that you're gonna do and you're like, okay, I'm really gonna challenge myself, but you're without the uh, intent to improve the health and function of your body, this is where we find most people fall into with like sports. And a lot of people fall into even with maybe like group exercise class or something like that. Like they're just gonna go and challenge themselves and then it becomes more about keeping up with the class or you know ranking on the leaderboard or something like that versus actually improving the health and function of your body now As you've heard from a lot of our content in the past, this is a very kind of short-term way of thinking about exercising. It's a short-term view to take to your exercise where it's like, well, I just need to, you know, do everything that I can today um, with, you know, complete disregard to how your body functions in the days and weeks that follow due to your workout today. So instead of thinking like that, we want you to take a little bit more of a long-term view, a long-term approach to your exercise. And as you go and challenge your body, you need to make sure you have that intention behind it of improving the health and function of your body. Right. And both parts of this are really important, at least when it comes to our definition, because here's the thing. We don't want you to exercise for the next 10 years. We want you to be exercising for the next the rest of your life, really. We want you to be exercising every single week for the rest of your life. And so that means we have to do things that are really sustainable. And so when it comes to finding time to have this, you know, four to seven times a week, I'm changing my clothes to to challenge my body. This is going to be my exercise. It's not my activity. It's not my activeness throughout the day. It's my exercise. And so that means I'm going into this chunk of time to challenge my body with the intent to improve the health and function of the body. Remember, both parts, the challenge and the intention to improve your health and function are both important. Now, Charlie touched on the challenge part. And when you do challenge without any intention to improve the health of your function, maybe you're challenging to keep up with the class, like he was saying, or challenging your body to win the race. That is what we call sports. And although there are some side effects of health and function sometimes, they're usually not intentional because there's also very high side effects of injury and, you know, making it so that you can never exercise or do that thing again because of the injury or whether it's long-term injury or short-term, whatever. We know that when you're only challenging without the intention to improve your health and function, that there are very high risks. So that's where we add in the intention to improve your health and function. 
But let's flip that. So what if you exercise, but you don't challenge your body, but you have the intention to improve the health and function of your body, right? Like let's say you uh, go to a yoga class and you're really internally focused. You're not focused on doing whatever the instructor is doing. Maybe there's some guidance there, but you're really focused on your own body. But what we find with, for example, like a yoga class for a lot of people, it's just not challenging to their body. So maybe it's really nice for your mental health, but it's not going to do the physical changes that we need from your exercise. So then it's missing the challenge part. Or for example, sometimes when people go to physical therapy, they're like, well, I'm not exercising right now because I'm doing physical therapy. And I'm like, okay, well, you're doing exercises there. Most of them aren't that challenging, but they are with the intention to improve your health and function. So again, we're missing the mark with that exercise piece. So we want to see that both are happening at the same time. And what happens there is that we get this awesome blend of, hey, I'm challenging my body, which we know is necessary to change your health and change your body. But we're also doing it in a very intentional way to improve the health and function of our body. So then we're not having those side effects of, you know, I don't exercise because it makes me feel really terrible after. We, we don't see that when you have that, that blend of the two. So when you're looking at your exercise spread, your whole, you know, meal plate of exercise, you want to see, hey, I'm active throughout the day and I do have designated exercise times. Now, a lot of people look at their spread and they realize, well, I'm really good at one and I'm really not good at the other one. We find a lot of people that value exercise, but also maybe work at a desk. They're really good at exercise because they get up, they get their run in, they get their weightlifting in, they get whatever in, but then they're sitting all day. And then we also see that people that I actually find this a lot that people that value exercise but haven't yet been exposed to like the exercise for life principles so they don't know how to challenge their body without getting hurt they're like well at least I'm doing something which is so so true I'm so glad you're still doing something they tend to fall in that active category because they haven't yet been able to figure out how to challenge their body and not get injured or their friend challenged their body and got injured so now they're nervous about it so we get it but this is this is the categories we usually find is like people are either usually very active or people are usually really great at getting their workouts in but we want to see you venture into finding time for both so if you are an active person and you struggle to exercise the best thing you can do is to schedule it that's not a shocker because any meeting any doctor's appointment any time you want to meet with whoever you schedule it so that it happens so a meeting with yourself to get in your exercise and then if you are in the active category because you have struck you've like tried challenging things and you're like oh my gosh my knees will die if I do that they will not handle that well or whatever your reason is if you are avoiding the challenging your body that means that you're not doing challenging exercise and so then you're not checking off that exercise category definitely jump into uh, some of our previous podcasts we were talking about the exercise for life principles we actually designed the exercise for life principles there's four of them so that once you know how to use them you can challenge your body and not get injured absolutely you know for me um, I'm really bad at making sure that I stay active throughout my day so for me getting the the exercise in that that's much easier for me to do. I'm much more consistent with that, but I still make sure that my workouts are scheduled. Like that, that's a really big thing. So here's the thing. Don't overlook that scheduling piece that Julie brought up. Uh, that is for so many people like the thing that changes their ability to actually get the space to start exercising on a consistent basis. And so if you are looking at your schedule right now today and you're like, well, I don't know when I'm possibly going to get a workout in today. If you are trying to schedule it the same day, it's not going to happen. You need to schedule things in advance. You need to commit to things in advance. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it needs to be like every Monday at noon and every Tuesday at 6 a.m. and every Wednesday. Like It doesn't necessarily need to be that exact same time every day during the week, but to be able to put it in advance in your, in your schedule. Uh, so times, so, so the time that you do have doesn't get, uh, covered up, doesn't get taken up by all the other st stuff that's going to fill your days and fill your weeks. That is a really, really big thing. So don't overlook that tip of, you know, scheduling your exercise. It seems like a tedious thing, but it can make all the difference. And then when you start applying the four exercise for life principles, that's what's going to allow you to keep doing it consistently because it's going to allow your body to keep feeling healthy, feeling strong, feeling well during and after each workout. Now, if you are like me and 
you know, you're good with getting your workouts in, but being active throughout your day is much more challenging. Uh, the tip that we that we recommend is to set your phone timer. Set your phone timer to go off every 30 to 60 minutes, whatever interval, like within that time frame that works well for you. Maybe it's 47 minutes, whatever. Find a time interval that you set your phone alarm for no more than 60 minutes. And when it goes off, you stand up and you move around and you stand up, you take a break from whatever it is you're doing. Okay. Three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes at a time, but you're getting up and you're moving around for that time. You go and you use your restroom, you refill your water bottle. You just walk up and down the hallway, whatever it is, you're just going to move for a little bit of time. And then that will allow you then, then now you have the, the freedom to come back and then start in on your tasks or whatever it is where you're doing, but reset that phone timer, having that thing that kind of breaks up, whatever it is you're doing, just that reminder throughout your day, uh, that's going to be a really big thing to kind of get you out of, again, like whatever flow you're in during the day, doing your tasks instead remind you, okay, yeah, now it's time to get up and move a little bit. Yeah, Charlie, setting a timer is huge. And I think part of setting the timer is also like the mental state of like, okay, I'm going to sit here for X amount of time and then I'll be getting up. And I think sometimes just going into your day prepared for that is helpful. And I do notice that with a lot of like really like focused, like I, I would think you're like a very focused person, especially because a lot of the work you do when you're not with clients is at a computer, right? Working on computer work. And that's really common these days. So making sure you're finding time throughout your day to get up. And I know one time we pulled one of our uh, OWA groups and they were like, yeah, sometimes I forget to get up because I'm just like so focused on getting to the end of my project. So again, setting that timer so that you're not having those four hour stretches where you're sitting or however long, but you're just getting up and moving. It doesn't have to be intense. It just has to be you're moving. And even if you're at a standing desk, notice that when you're standing, you're not moving. So that you're moving, I guess if you had a treadmill desk, like that would be perfect. Yeah, that would work. That would work. Totally. But remember, both are important. So so if you are currently really active, finding ways to, to get in those challenging exercise bouts that have intention to build your health and function. And if you're already really good at exercising, finding time to be more active throughout your day because you won't get the complete picture of um, health through your exercise unless you're getting both. And I hope that if you just take one thing from the today's podcast that you realize, oh shoot, I'm doing one and not the other. Oh, oh shoot, I'm doing that one, but not that one. How do we figure out how to get both in? Because it is hard. A lot of us, especially if you already are listening to this, you probably already have some value in exercise. That means you're doing probably what you can, but we're trying to open your eyes to other opportunities to start improving your body, improving your health, and making sure you're getting in both is really, really important. And remember that each one is not replaceable. So that means that if you are really active, you are not getting the health benefits of having exercise bouts throughout your week. And if you do regular exercise bouts, but the rest of the time you're sedentary, you're not getting the health benefits of being regularly active or active throughout your day. So always keep that in mind, just challenging yourself to figure out how can I fit this in? Hope we, and we ho really hope that our tips helped. Now, if you are struggling to get in your exercise, your challenging times throughout your week with the intention to build the health and function of your body, we would love for you to try out our Exercise for Life membership. We actually offer a two-week free membership right now. So you can go on, sign up, and get a totally two weeks for free. You can do a couple programs. We do everything in programs, actually, because we don't want to have you do one workout and then you're like, okay, what's next? Mm -hmm. But it, they kind of build on each other. But specifically in those programs, what a lot of our members have told us is how amazing it is to challenge their bodies without the breakdown, without the negative side effects because a lot of us know how to challenge our bodies a lot of us know we could put our shoes on and just go sprint a lot of us know we could go to the weight room and just lift weights and challenge our body but what we don't what was really confusing for a lot of us is how to do it in an intentional way so that we have the challenge to improve our health but we're not having those negative side effects and that's exactly what we teach you in our exercise for life membership so if you're interested in that you can go to www.exerciseforlifestudios.com so who do you know that needs to hear this episode who do you know that is either very active throughout their day but is not getting that really focused challenge time in and they're telling themselves a story that like, oh, well, I'm active throughout my day so I'm good 
Or the flip side is they're not very active throughout their day, but they do have an hour or so every single day where they are intensely challenging their body. Share this episode with them so they can understand the difference between the two and why they need to get in both and how to get in both throughout their day and throughout their week. And while you're online, head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a rating and review. It helps people find our podcast when they're looking for information on exercise and they're looking for information on health. So if you found value in this conversation today, let us know by leaving us a five-star rating and review. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. We always appreciate it. Have a fantastic week and we'll talk with you all next week. This podcast is for information purposes only. The statements and views on this podcast are not medical advice. This podcast, including Julie and Charlie Gates, disclaim responsibility for any possible adverse effects from the use of information contained herein. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about guest qualifications or credibility. This podcast may contain paid endorsements or advertisements for products or services. Individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein. If you think you have a medical issue, consult a licensed physician.